jingle, jingle. What? That's wrong. It's jingle time, my friends. Although any time is a good time for jingo. Welcome to Miss Joyce and Friends Holiday Show of Shows. Woo! <laughs> Hi, Miss Joyce. Hi, everyone. Hi, Miss Sing. Hi, Miss Rebecca. It is indeed the Shaler North Hills Library holiday show of shows and I'm so lucky because I get to present the first activity and we all know what rhyming words are and we just know that rhyming words are words that sound the same at the end like cat mat so I have this fun little game and here's my friend Rudolph Rudolph does not have a nose, and we know how important Rudolph's nose is to the story of Rudolph the Red-Nosed mm -hmm. Reindeer. Good point. Mm -hmm. Good point. Mm -hmm. So what I have no pun here, intended. <laughs> so what I have here are a whole bunch of noses for Rudolph. Oh, we're going to see which one works the best. Let's see which one works the best. Look at all of these. And you're going to help me decide which nose and when we should put it on Rudolph. So here we go. Listen to my poem. The color words, I'm, we're going to use our color words and the color words are going to rhyme with a word in the poem. So here we go. Listen carefully. Rudolph, Rudolph, what will you do? You can't guide Santa's sleigh if your nose is. Now the color word we're looking for rhymes with do. Do yellow, do black, do blue, do <laughs> blue. Okay, there we go. Does that look quite right? I don't know about that. Let's try another one. Here we go. Rudolph, Rudolph, you're such a silly fellow. But how will we know it's you if your nose is fellow? Fellow yellow, that's right, fellow yellow. Does that look like Rudolph? No, it doesn't look like Rudolph, but the rhyming is good. Here we go, let's try again. Rudolph, Rudolph, your way cannot be seen in the wintry weather if your nose is <gasps> seen. Green. green! Yes, if your nose is green. Does that look, I look, you're right, Miss Rebecca, that just doesn't look right. All right, let's try it again. Let's try it again. Rudolph, Rudolph, Santa gave a wink. But what will Santa think if your nose is wink, pink, wink, pink, wink, Pink. There we go. <laughs> not quite, not quite the way we think Rudolph usually looks. Mm -mm, missed let's it by again. that much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's try it again. Rudolph, Rudolph, it's time to fly at night. But you can't quite see you if your nose is sight. White, sight, white. Does that look right? No, I, I agree with you, Miss Rebecca. That doesn't look quite right. Okay, we only have three colors left. Black, red, and brown. Let's try it. Here we go. Rudolph, Rudolph, it's time to go to town. But Santa's wearing a frown because your nose is Frown, town, brown. Whoa. Now that does look like a reindeer, maybe, but it's not Rudolph. Let's try it again. Here we go. Rudolph, Rudolph, Santa has his sack, but you're not quite ready if your nose is sack, black, sack, black. 
looks pretty good. It looks pretty good, but it really doesn't look like Rudolph. But this is my favorite part of the poem. Are we ready? Here we go. Rudolph, Rudolph, the children are in bed. And I know that you're ready because your nose is Good rhyming, everyone. Fantastic. Don't you think he looks cuter without a nose? No. No, I think he looks like Rudolph. Yes. I know, but I just mean aesthetic. He does look cute, though. He looks cute without the nose. How about his antlers? I, I made his antlers. He's so cute. Nice. Oh, that's that's so neat. Yeah. 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 There we go. There we go. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for listening, everybody. Terrific. We'll be back. We'll be back. Hey, Miss Singh, happy Hanukkah. Yes, hello, yes. I am very happy to be here, and happy Hanukkah to you as well, Miss Rebecca. Hey, thanks, I love your robes. And these are my robes, well, <laughs> because this is Miss Joyce and Friends holiday show of shows, and I'm very happy to be among the friends of Miss Joyce. That was a great Rudolph thing we did. That was, yeah, really, it was really cool. cool. That was awesome. Another holiday that some people celebrate in this month of December, and this year it's earlier, I believe the final night is the 18th, is Hanukkah. And one of the games that people who celebrate Hanukkah, and even people who don't celebrate Hanukkah, play is dreidel, all right? Dreidel's really cool. It's a little complex for me. Like, I've been trying to learn for the past couple years because we would always have, like, live Hanukkah parties, but... I can't really play it. I, it's really cool though. It's fun. Google how to play dreidel because it's fun. Plus there's chocolate involved. Mm -hmm. But what I'd like to do is sing the very famous song, Four Little Dreidels Sitting on the Floor. So we have four little dreidels. And actually this is the floor and it's blue. Okay. So, four little dreidels spinning on the floor, four little dreidels spinning on the floor. Spin, spin, spin went the dreidels, out went one through the door. Three little dreidels spinning on the floor, three little dreidels spinning on the floor. All three little dreidels were spinning on the floor. What do you do? Because one went away and then there were two. Two little dreidels sitting on the floor, two little dreidels started to spin. Two little dreidels, what fun they had. Two little dreidels, oh fun can never be bad. Two little dreidels, they were not done. One went home and then there was one. Do, 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 do. One little dreidel dancing on the floor. One little dreidel dancing on the floor. One little dreidel, he was a hero. He went home and then, as you know, then there were zero dreidels on the floor. Oh, 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 oh. How many dreidels on the floor? Z E R O. And that is my Hanukkah Carol. It was really nice. All right, and we'll be back with a fabulous story from you, Miss Rebecca. See ya. My friends. Welcome to Miss Joyce and Friends Holiday Show of Shows here at the Shaler North Hills Library. Oh, we were just serenaded by the wonderful Miss Ng and her dreidel song, which truly is an earworm. Yeah, I wish I could remember some of it, but I just wrote it for this. So I can't Did remember. Did you write it? I didn't go back. I wrote it and composed it. Did you write it on a piece of paper? Did you write it in your brain? I wrote it in my mind, but I knew it would be saved forever. That's true. I it I know. is saved forever. I know. So that was kind of uh, cool. That's yeah. nice. Yeah. Well, my friends, I have brought a story that I really enjoy sharing around the holiday times. Um, it has nothing to do with any holidays, but it does have something to do with yarn and snow and just being nice and kind, which, you know, 
That's what the holidays is about. That's Water good any snow. time of year. Yeah, really, actually. Except for snow. That's not always good. That's very unpredictable, actually. Okay. Okay. Off we go, my friends. The Mitten, told by Jim Aylesworth. Once upon a time, there was a happy little boy who loved to play. Yes, he did. In the spring, he loved to climb trees and peek into baby birds. In the summer, he loved to chase the golden butterflies. In the autumn, he loved to play in piles of golden leaves. And in the winter, he loved to play in the white, white snow. And every winter, because she loved him, the little boy's grandmother would knit a great warm woolen hat that he could pull down over his little ears. A long warm woolen scarf that he could wrap two times around his neck and a pair of warm woolen mittens for his little hands. And on the cold, cold day of this story, the little boy dressed himself warmly in his hat, his scarf, and his mittens, and he went outside to play. And he played, and he played, and he played. But when at last he came inside, it was discovered that one of his mittens was lost. Oh no, said the little boy. Don't worry, said the grandmother. We'll find it tomorrow. You've had enough cold for one day. And because she loved him, she made him a mug of steaming hot chocolate. In the meantime, just while the little boy was sipping his hot chocolate, a squirrel came along and saw the lost mitten lying on the snow. <laughs> said the squirrel. My toes are cold as ice. This mitten looks so cozy and warm toes would feel so nice. So the squirrel crawled into the little boy's mitten to warm his toes. The squirrel found the mitten quite warm and very comfortable and soon he was so nice and toasty in there that he fell asleep. But just then along came a rabbit. said the rabbit. Let me come in. No room, said the squirrel. Go away. Please, begged the rabbit. My toes are cold as ice. Your mitten looks so cozy and warm toes would feel so nice. Oh, okay, said the squirrel. You can come in. And the rabbit crawled in. It was a bit tight in there for two. Nevertheless, with a little budging over, they were able to manage. And very soon they were nice and toasty warm and they fell sound asleep. But just then, along came a fox. Burr, said the fox, let me come in. No room, said the rabbit. No room, said the squirrel. Go away. Please, begged the fox. My toes are cold as ice. Your men look so cozy and warm toes would feel so nice. Oh, okay, said the rabbit. Oh, okay, said the squirrel. You can come in. And the fox squeezed in. It was really crowded in there now with three. Nevertheless, the mittens stretched out enough and soon they were nice and toasty warm. Uh-oh. But just when they had fallen sound asleep, along came a... Burr, said the bear. Let me come in. No room, said the fox. No room, said the rabbit. No room, said the squirrel. Go away. Please, begged the bear. My toes are cold as ice. Your men look so cozy and warm toes would feel so nice. Oh, okay, said the fox. Oh, okay, said the rabbit. Oh, okay, said the squirrel. You can come in. The bear squeezed and pushed and squeezed and pushed and squeezed and pushed until at last he got himself in. It was very cramped in there with the four of them all squished together like that. Still, they were nice and toasty warm and soon they all fell sound asleep. But just then, along came a little mouse. <laughs> said the little mouse in a teeny tiny voice. Let me come in. No room, said the bear. No room, said the fox. No room, said the rabbit. No room, said the squirrel. Go away. Please, begged the little mouse. My toes are cold as ice. 
Your bed looks so cozy and warm toast would feel so nice. We can't, said the bear. Two bowls, said the fox. No way, said the rabbit. Impossible, said the squirrel. Go away! Please, said the little mouse. I'm just a little mouse. Oh, okay, said the bear. Oh, okay, said the fox. Oh, okay, said the rabbit. Oh, okay, said the squirrel. You can come in. And they all... <gasps> held their breath while the little mouse carefully squeezed into a teeny tiny spot. And for a minute, all was well. Until suddenly, the bear and the fox and the rabbit and the squirrel all had to take a great big deep breath of air. And as they did, <laughs> the mitten burst apart and spilled them all out onto the snow. What a shame, said the bear. What a shame, said the fox. Oh, what a shame, said the rabbit. What a shame, said the squirrel. Oh, it is, said the mouse. A terrible, terrible shame. Then one by one, the mouse, the bear, the fox, the rabbit, and the squirrel all went off to find another place to warm their toes. In the morning, the little boy and his grandmother went out looking for the lost mitten. Soon they came upon the bits and pieces of yarn lying on the snow. Oh, what could have happened? asked the little boy. I have no idea, said the grandmother, but don't worry, I can knit another. And because she loved him, that's exactly what she did. The end, my friends. That was that wonderful, was Miss Rebecca. Yes. That was fantastic. I wish the animals would have realized that, well, I mean, sure, the mitten was helping them stay warm, but also just them being together was helping them stay warm. So I wish they would have, like, just kept hanging out and maybe gone to, like, I don't know, like, the popcorn bag or something. Well, they would have gotten buttery. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, or like maybe somebody had thrown out their sock, and then there could well, be like the sock. There could have been reasons though that sock had been thrown out that may not be inviting to animals with a sense of smell. That's true. That's <laughs> that true. is true. Maybe. That My is friends, true. we'll see you soon. Hey, Miss Joyce, that looks like a really cool book. It is going to be a very cool book. It's a book about poems. Ooh. I know. And it um, the poems are written by a woman whose name is Jane Yolen. And um, the coolest thing about this, I think one of the coolest things about this book, is that the photographs were taken by a guy named Jason Stemple. And when we read books together, it's fun because sometimes the illustrators use crayons, markers, paints, a computer, but the tool that was used for the illustrations in this book is a camera. So I just think it's so cool that every illustrator can use a different tool to help us understand the story or the poem. So here we go. I like this poem because when you uh, see our show, it will be winter. And this is um, a book about winter. So I love this poem and um, when I did our little Rudolph game, our Rudolph poem, we were listening for rhyming words and in this poem we're going to hear some rhyming words. So here we go. The name of the poem is called Snow on the Trees and if you look carefully here's one of the photographs that Jason Stemple took with his camera. It's a beautiful picture of snow on a tree. So here we go. And I, I also want everybody to use their imagination. So here we go. Somebody painted the trees last night, crept in and colored them white on white. When I awoke, the tree limbs shone as white as milk and as bleached as a bone. As white as wool, as chalk, as cream, as white as ghosts 
in a white night dream. Just one day past, they were dark brown, and today they are wearing a diamond crown. Somebody painted the trees last night with ivory paint pots, white on white. Did you ever look at the snow and you kind of see it sparkling, either when the moon or the sun is shining on it? And it does remind us, it reminds me of diamonds. I'll read the part about the diamonds again. Just one day passed, so that maybe would have been yesterday. They were dark brown but today they wear a diamond crown. Does it mean that the trees are wearing a crown? No, it means that in our imagination, we see sparkly diamonds. I love poems. And did you hear those rhyming words? I'm going to read the poem one more time. And this time when I read it, I'm going to make a point of saying the rhyming words in each stanza of the poem. Somebody painted the trees last night, crept in and colored them white on white, night white. When I awoke, the tree limbs shone as white as milk and as bleached as bone, bone shone. As white as wool, as chalk, as cream, as white as ghosts in a white night dream, dream, cream. Just one day past, they were dark brown, and today they wear a diamond crown, brown, crown. Somebody painted the trees last night with ivory paint pots, white, on white, night white. There we go, Snow on the Trees, written by Jane Young. Nice Young. poem! Yeah. yeah! Thank you, thank you. I love poems. Um, thanks. thanks everyone, bye. 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 Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 Look who it is on Miss Joyce's Friends dun, show, dun, dun, holiday dun, dun, show dun, dun, shows. Dun, dun, it's dun, Ted dun, dancing, dun, everyone. Dun, dun, dun. Dude, he totally looks like Ted Danson. It's so weird. Hey, my name is Miss Ang, and I'm back, and I'm I'm disappointed. I'm sad. I Why? really wanted to I really wanted to read Jan Brett's Gingerbread Baby, but the only copy I have is this board book, which it really shouldn't have never been made into a board book anyway. But like, in order to make money, but anyway, so <laughs> it shouldn't be anyway. But it's also not the complete story. And I love doing the gingerbread baby because of the song. You know, Maddie tries to make a gingerbread man. He's supposed to wait so long, you know, not peek in the oven or else something terrible will happen. I don't know. He peeks in and the gingerbread man isn't grown yet into a man. So the baby hops out. It's just a gingerbread baby. And he sings this song. I'm a gingerbread baby. Catch me if you can. I'm the gingerbread baby, fresh from the pan. And he just has a lot of good musical moments. Because it really is a musical, but... Not today. Not today. Not today, not tomorrow, not next week. But I have a great story called The Runaway Latkes. Which is sort of like the gingerbread baby, but not as musical. But still. This is a Hanukkah story, and I can explain it to you at the beginning, because we find out over 2,000 years ago, in present-day Israel, a group of Jews led by Judah Maccabee fought King Antiochus of Syria for the right to practice their religion freely. And the holiday of Hanukkah celebrates the Maccabees victory, because Judah and his brothers, like, they got in there, and they fought the whole Syrian army and it was like pretty incredible. And what had happened was the king, he had destroyed their temple 
So then Judah and his brothers, they went into the temple, right? And when they got in there, everything was just a mess because this king and his army had just trashed the place. And the, the lamp that needed oil to, to burn for like eight days, right? It was all spilled everywhere, the oil. And there was only enough oil for one night. But that's where the eight nights come from. And that's where the miracle of Hanukkah comes from. Because the tiny bit of oil that they found, boom, it lasted eight nights. So that's why Hanukkah is like eight crazy nights. Hey, yes. thanks for that that's background cool. story. That was pretty nice. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I learned that from Dr. Doherty, who comes to our Hanukkah party every year, and Miss Shana, who used to work here, because that's part of their tradition. Cool. And it was wonderful to hear that story. Now, here's the deal. Remember I said about the oil keeping the, the lamp lit for eight nights, right? Okay. Latkes are delicious potatoes cooked in oil. So the oil is like symbolic of that miracle. Isn't that cool? Mm. And if you've ever had latkes, Miss Shannon used to bring latkes. Yeah. Delicious. Okay, so get yourself some lockies. Hmm, you might get hungry. I'm hungry. The runaway lockies. The first night of Hanukkah was just a few hours away. Rebecca Bloom was at synagogue making potato pancakes, lockies, for the big Hanukkah party. Everyone agreed that Rebecca made the crispiest, tastiest, perfectly rounded latkes in town. Plop, plop. She dropped each latke in a big pan of hot oil. Sizzle flip, sizzle flip. As she cooked, she sang to herself. Big and round, crisp and brown, I fry latkes by the pound. Rebecca had just finished her first pan full of lockies when, to her amazement, one, two, three lockies jumped from the oil right onto the floor. They rolled out the door singing, Big and round, crisp and brown, off we roll to see the town, and you can't catch us! Woo! Oh my! exclaimed Rebecca. We need those lockies for our party tonight. Stop, lockies, stop! But the lockies did not stop. They repeated, Big and round, crisp and brown, off we roll into see the town, and you can't catch us. So Rebecca turned off the stove, grabbed a tray, and ran after the lockies. The lockies rolled along past the door to the rabbi's study. When rabbi saw them, he closed his book and said, Hey, hey stop, stop, lockies, stop! We need you for our party tonight! But the lockies didn't stop. They just sang, <laughs> All right, big and round, we are crisp and brown, and off we're rolling, gonna see the town, and you can't catch us. So, the rabbi chased the lockies, and Rebecca chased the rabbi. The lockies rolled along past the room where the cantor was practicing scales. When she saw what was happening, she changed her tune. Stop, lockies, stop! We need you for our party tonight! But the lockies did not stop. They sang, Big and round, crisp and brown, we sing better than you do. Off we roll to see the town, oh dooby doo doo, and you can't catch us. So the cantor chased the lockies, and the rabbi chased the cantor, and Rebecca chased the rabbi. The lockies rolled along out the front door of the synagogue. Two boys were playing ball. They were waiting for the celebration to begin that evening. When they saw the runaway lockies, they stopped throwing the ball to each other and they threw it at the lockies instead, trying to roll them over. Hmm, that was clever. Stop, lockies! Hey, stop! Come on! We want to eat the party tonight, dudes! But the lockies did not stop. They sang, Big and round, crisp and brown, you can't even aim a football. So we are going to town to see the town hall. And you can't catch us because you probably run as well as you throw. So here we go. 
So the boys chased the Lotkis, and the cantor chased the boys, and the rabbi chased the cantor, and Rebecca chased the rabbi. Those Lotkis were not very nice. Through the town, the Lotkis went. They rolled up onto the mayor's office. Out he hurried to see what all the noise was about. Lotkis! My mother used to make Lotkis for me every Hanukkah. Rubbing his stomach, he proclaimed loudly, Stop, Lockies, stop, by order of the mayor! But the Lockies did not stop. They sang, Big and round, crisp and brown, You're not gonna oppress our freedom. Off we roll to see the town, And you can't catch us. So the mayor chased the Lockies, And the boys chased the mayor, And the cantor chased the boys, And the rabbi chased the cantor, And Rebecca chased the rabbi. The Lockies rolled down the sidewalk In front of the police station Where Sue and her partner Harry Were just getting done for the day. What is that? That looks like trouble. Not trouble. That's Lockies. Let's take them in for questioning. Stop, Lucky, stop! Stop in the name of law! And Harry murmured, Stop in the name of an empty belly. And three women came up and sang, Stop in the name of love! But the Lockies did not stop. They sang, Big and round, crisp and brown, Off we roll to see the town, And you can't catch us, No matter how supremely awesome you are. Now after all this rolling, the Lockies were hot, even hotter than they'd been in Rebecca Bloom's frying pan. Just ahead of them at the edge of town was a cool wide river called Applesauce River. The Lockies rolled straight toward it. No! cried the police officers and the mayor and the boys and the cantor and the rabbi and Rebecca and the Supremes. You'll get wet and soggy and no one will be able to eat you. The Lockies hadn't listened before and they didn't listen now. But just as they plopped into the river, plunk, a miracle happened. A modern day Hanukkah miracle. In front of everyone's eyes, the water in Applesauce River turned into real applesauce. The perfect bath for Cree three crispy, kind of rude Lockies. Rebecca blinked. Then one, two, three, she plucked the Lockies right out of the river. She put them on a tray. There were just enough Lockies and just enough applesauce for each person to have one bite. Even after the pancakes' long trip through town, they tasted heavenly. Still, just one bite, the mayor sighed. I suppose one bite will have to do, Harry sighed. And look, Applesauce River has turned back into water. I wonder if we'll ever eat anything so delicious again, Sue sighed. Of course you will, Rebecca answered her. This very evening... You're all invited back to the synagogue for a Hanukkah celebration. And sure enough, at the synagogue that night, Rebecca made certain there were plenty of lockies for the rabbi, the cantor, the boys, the mayor, Harry and Sue, the Supremes, and everyone who came to the party. They lit the menorah, they spun dreidels, they danced, and they noshed far into the night singing. Crisp and brown, big and brown, better luck is can't be found. And they were right. The runaway lockies, my friends. That's pretty awesome. Right here. I'm so glad we had this time together Just to share a laugh and sing a song I can't believe that our show is drawing to a conclusion This was Miss Joyce and Friends' holiday show of shows with Ted Danson and Miss Rebecca And you have a special treat for us before we go though, right? Well, I mean, we'll call it that well, I think it's a special. I mean, I haven't seen it. We didn't rehearse, shockingly. <laughs> well, but, but. there's not much to rehearse. What we're going to do for our final act of Miss Joyce and Friends Holiday Show of Shows with Ted Danson. With Ted Danson and the Snow 
people and the asparagus. Asparagus, asparagus. And the wand. And the wand. And bells. Yeah. Is sing. Oh, Rudolph's Red Dress Reindeer. All right. We are going to sing the traditional version. Okay, right. I don't like it when people like. Well, you know, to each their own. I mean, Whatever fine. blows your hair back. It's fine. We're going to yeah. roll with the traditional yeah. one. All right, if you cool, want to do cool. it up at home or yeah, wherever that's you're fine. at, mm -hmm. whatever way, yeah. you know, that's for you and your mm -hmm. super special mm -hmm. grown-ups to decide. Everybody prefers a different kind of Rudolph, and that's yeah. fine. Yeah. And, and, I mean, I don't have, I'm just going to sing it wild-like, but fine. Okay. Cool. Ready? Ready. You know Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Dixon, Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen. At the Copacabana. But do you recall the most famous reindeer of all? Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose. Like Ted. And if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows. All of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names. They never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Then all the reindeer loved him, as they shouted out with glee. Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer, you'll go down in history. Woo! Goodbye to 2020. Do you have any parting thoughts for our young and old viewers at home? Goodbye, 2020. Goodbye, Goodbye 2020. Yay. See you never again. Yay. <laughs> Miss Joyce, thank yes. you for allowing us to be a part of your yes. holiday show of shows. This is really everybody's show. It's show the Shaler shows. North Hills Library Show. It's just so nice to see everybody mm -hmm. and for you to join us and enjoy. Well, We'll see you in January yes. for another special. Snow Ganza! Woo! Woo!